Hello and welcome back. It's going to be a very suspicious episode today. I'll be crafting a small crew of Among Us characters here on the Matt Yasa channel. I'll start out on a nine millimeter borosilicate rod and gather up a nice sphere for the base of the character. The first one I'll make from completely clear glass. So he'll be transparent, very good for an imposter. I'll also be starting the video off at a more real time pace. This should give you a better feel for how the process works and how long it takes. But then I'll be speeding up the video a bit with the other characters just to get things rolling along. And so Among Us is a recently released video game. It's a murder mystery, a little bit like Clue, except a bit more dynamic as the killer, or in this case the imposter, is still attempting to eliminate the crew. When one of the crew members, or even the imposter, finds a new body, they can report it to the rest of the crew, and a discussion can begin to attempt to eliminate the suspicious intruder. The imposters are randomly chosen from the players who join the game, so nobody knows who is who. And the crew is also tasked with completing several jobs around the ship such as cleaning some oxygen filters, emptying the garbage, and rewiring some wires. Among several others that may take more or less time to complete. And now that I have a nice sized gather and completed the cylinder shaping, I'll begin to add the visor for the eyes. I'll swipe some of this clear glass over the gather to add it on and then go back in with my sculpting tool. And it takes a lot of heat and hand control, especially sculpting in clear as it will start to move around just like water. If you are just getting into lamp working, it is a good idea to practice quite a bit on clear first before moving into colored glass. It's basically the same glass, just with added elements or materials into it. So it causes it to be a little more stiff, a bit more like dough. And so it's good to get a nice baseline and clear first. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add on the backpack. I kind of gathered up a small sphere and then attached it onto his back directly in the flame. That's a good way to get a solid attachment. And now if the attachment is too cold, the two pieces won't form together into one solid piece. And it may very easily break apart later. And I'll go ahead and apply a lot of heat from all directions to melt that back down into a sphere and flatten it out to start forming the backpack. I'm gonna go back in with my sculpting tool, the trusty butter knife, and begin to square it up on all angles. Which can be a little bit difficult with how the glass likes to melt. It begins to melt back any edges or corners and angles. And so with enough heat, it will always prefer to globulate into a sphere. Unless you stop rotating, and then it'll start to drip off your rod and fall onto the floor. And now I'll go ahead and punty to the top of the head and melt off the bottom rod. I'm using the Bethlehem Bravo which is a surface mix lamp working torch. It's similar to a normal pre-mix welding torch. However, it sends the fuel and oxygen 
all the way through to the end of the torch instead of pre-mixing them internally. And so you end up with a slightly colder but wider flame, which can be better for the more sensitive glass, like the cadmium colors. The flame is also a bit more quiet and has a more greatly reduced chance of a flashback. That's when the flame will burn its way back into the torch and possibly through the lines and into your fuel tank, hence the flashback arrestor. And now before I go more into the Bravo, I'm going to add two simple legs to my character. Which is one of the reasons I chose this project was the characters have more simpler shapes or designs. These shapes are very well suited for a lamp working torch. It's a good project to practice on. But now for the Bravo, they recently released a new version. They changed the center fire to offer a more pinpoint, hotter flame. They didn't go too much into the specifics, and I don't have one here to compare to this one. But what I can tell from photos is that it looks like they've pulled those propane ports closer together. And so it kind of looks like it might produce a smaller, more concentrated flame. And I know a smaller flame doesn't sound like a good update for a torch. But then I was thinking about all the projects that I've done on my channel in which I've just used the center fire alone, a bit like this one. And so maybe the original center fire is just a little too big. I usually do complain about not getting that sharp and hot flame. And so I've knocked him off the punty. He looks like he's standing upright. I'm going to finish off that last mark and oh, I ended up dropping it there. And now he's still pretty hot, probably around 700, 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's why I'm being extra careful not to touch him. He just keeps slipping out of my grasp. I think he definitely is the imposter. And now I'll put him in the kiln at 1050 Fahrenheit for half an hour. And I'll begin on the next version of him, which will be his discovered body. It will be very similar to the original looking character, but instead of his top half, it'll be a cartoonish looking bone. It looks very similar to a femur, so it's kind of weird why it's in the top half of him. It's basically a white cylinder with two disconnected spheres at the top. When you do get into the shaping process, it's good to have a nice handle on the different kind of shapes. A lot of objects can be broken down into their primary shapes. Just ovals and circles, maybe flat spheres. And of course it helps quite a bit to have a picture of the object next to you to reference to as you're sculpting your piece. I normally make that mistake, but this time I brought in an old tablet to bring up some photos. White is definitely one of those more sensitive colors. If you overheat it, it can begin to bubble and boil. And so I'm using Whiteout from Troutman Art Glass. It seems to perform the best for me with the least bubbling. You can also work it further out in the flame where it's cooler. I've gathered up a small sphere and begin to divide it into two halves. Now I'm going to sculpt those little lines down the side a little bit to give it those intricate details. And that's looking pretty good right there. I'm going to attach a punty, which I'll use a white rod. That way I leave less of a punty mark behind. That's a good trick to match the punty to the glass you're working with. If I don't have a full rod of color, sometimes I'll just add a tiny bit of that color to a clear rod and use that. 
And now that I have the bottom section flattened out, I'm gonna come back in with some clear glass to finish off his legs. I am kind of a bit of a gamer myself. I was planning to bring in some gaming footage along with some glass footage and try to overload you with content all at once. But I'm not sure if I would be doing this game among us just for the more graphical nature of it. And so that may largely be determined by the response of this video. If it gets a good amount of views and shares, I may be more tempted to do some gameplay footage. I could do just a little bit of editing, a couple cuts to make it more family friendly. And so I'll just go ahead and finish up the backpack and move on to the next character, which will be a cadmium orange. This opaque orange is called OJ and is from Glass Alchemy. I'll start off again by gathering up some clear glass and forming it into another cylinder shape for the body. But now I'll start to heat up the OJ and begin to swipe it across the surface of the clear glass. I'm sort of drawing it on like a pencil, but a pencil made of lava. And as I'm laying the lines down, I'm kind of squeezing them next to each other to push out all that air and all that space to make a solid sheet of orange. And I kind of follow the flame down right in front of the line to make sure I get a solid connection between the two areas. If it's not hot enough, you might trap some air or little bubbles. And so I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If so, make sure to hit that like button and share it on your favorite social feed. That really helps the channel. And I know I just said this in my last video, but welcome new subscribers. I actually ended up having over 50 new subscribers since the last video. So thanks for finding some interest in the channel, but also a big thank you to the returning subscribers who've been checking the videos out month after month, even years now. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so you can see what's coming up. And now so that this character can see what's coming for them, I'm gonna attach the eye visor now. You might have noticed I'm using a light cobalt blue. From the pictures I've seen, all their visors have a blue tint to them. And now I'm assuming that blue color comes from the reflection of the ship. And so it's probably just clear glass, but if I used clear glass here, it wouldn't really show up. So that blue should cast a little bit of a contrast. I'll begin to attach his backpack and shape it now. And so I forgot to mention with this coloring technique, after you apply the lines, you do want to melt them in really well. That way it creates one solid layer of colored glass. And so it may be a little more difficult to do this coloring technique, but you can stretch your colored glass pretty far as colored glass is much more expensive than clear. And so the inside of this piece is completely clear, but it's hard to tell because the outside surface of the solid glass blocks the light. And so if you do attempt some solid color sculptures, you'll find yourself running through the color pretty quickly. And now lastly, this technique won't translate well to transparent colors. A transparent layer may only slightly tint the clear glass underneath, becoming almost unnoticeable. But then if you gather the transparent color up thicker and thicker, 
It'll become darker and darker as it blocks more light. So there's really a lot of options you have when it comes to colors and almost an unlimited amount of ways you have to apply them. You may be wondering why the orange looks like it's changed to red. And that's merely because the cadmium is still glowing underneath. It's giving it a darker red tone. And so I am having some fun on this project. I made a couple more, which I didn't highlight in this video, an amber purple and a green one. I thought the amber purple looked pretty good. That's a reactive color, which has a bit of precious metal, some silver and gold in it. And so it reacts to the heat and the type of atmosphere and changes different colors. But I did use that color quite a bit in my last video for the chest set. It's a must have for any lamp working studio. But now I'm going to switch over to the last one, a Mystique Blue. For this one, I won't be layering it over clear. Instead, I'll gather up the color rod by itself. I'm also going to add a little bit of a transparent white underneath the visor. And then layer the cobalt blue over that. This way the cobalt blue can kind of stand apart from the blue mystique that the body is made out of. It makes it look like there's a little bit of light kind of reflecting out of the visor. It looks kind of cool. And so as I attempt these pieces and practice making these multiple characters, each rendition gets a little bit better, a little finer shaped and maybe a little more detail. And so it really shows you that practice is a definite key to success. Of course, having the availability to the tools and the information needed is an important step. If you don't have enough of those resources to begin with, you might not thrive as far as you potentially could. It's sort of like a garden in a way. My channel, for example, to reach some more success needs to gain a bit more exposure. I do have some pretty powerful growth. I believe I have a good foundation I'm building on here. I just don't have a lot of exposure to the outside sun. And that sun is you. And so I hope you're shining bright out there today. Having a good day. A good time. That's what's important. But what's going to be important to this blue crewmate is his little crewmate. And so I'm going to make a little mini man. There's some different cosmetic features in the game, such as hats, skins, and pets. And one of those pets happens to be a little crewmate. I was thinking this is actually good lamp working practice to take those same techniques and shapes, but onto a much smaller scale. It'll be a little bit less than half the size of the original piece. It's going to require a bit more heat control and some more hand eye coordination. I'm just trying to square off his visor a little bit and then I'll go in to make the backpack. And now as I'm melting the backpack on, I have to be careful with the small body. I don't want it to overheat and begin to distort its shape. This is an example where the Bravo Sharp Flame might be a little bit more handy. There are a lot of different torches you can choose from. But overall, I always felt it's the artists themselves that make the glass and not the torch you choose. And as I said before, that's from the years of practicing. Just like a musical instrument, you can't really expect to pick it up and 
become really amazing within one day or a week. But when you stay dedicated to it, you really do see those improvements and they stick with you. And now I'll finish up his legs so he can stick with his bigger crewmate. But I want to thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoy these close-ups of all the work done today and have enjoyed your visit here on the Matt Yasa channel.